Okay, so we're briefly checking in for a temperature check on our clay here, which has been sitting for a couple of hours right here in my little studio space. And let's take a look at these. So now the clay has begun to enter the stage called leather hard. We can tell because it's not quite as flexible. And if I were to rock this back and forth a couple times, it breaks. It doesn't break super easy, but it doesn't bend with as much flexibility as it did when it was fresh out of the bag. But at this point, it will definitely hold a little more weight. Okay, but as we said before, when clay is this thin, you're not going to be doing a lot of structural work with it, okay? So, I'll just let that sit for a little more. These are all about at the same range. Okay, I was hoping there was one a little drier where I could show you where it snaps, but I think we'll wait probably in another couple of hours. Um, these will be along to bone dry. All right. Okay, so we're back looking at about the third stage here of our clay, where it's getting right through the leather hard stage. And some of these pieces are just on the verge of being dry. And so when they're getting dry like this, they snap much more easily. So your clay will be pretty strong if it's thicker, but if you have thin pieces that are at this stage, this is when they can be uh, where they start to get pretty fragile and then they'll be very fragile when they're dry. Still, there are advantages to this stage, which is, as we said, the end of the greenware stage before they're going to start turning bone dry. So you can see I'm pressing on this. If I press on it too hard, it will snap, but if I just show you just gentle pressure, you'll see that this actually resists my efforts to bend it. I would have to really exert in there to really bend it. So this is actually a good stage where if you want to do some kind of fine detailing <clears throat> it will be easier to do without having the clay tear okay so if i want to cut this i get a really nice almost exacto blade like cut on there holds the edge and doesn't get mushy when we move that this is also a point where if you want to put holes in something <clears throat> say for a teapot or um, a colander. You can take this just very gently using a hole maker. Come in there you get a nice clean cut hole in there. Okay so sometimes people get super eager when they want to put carvings or do cutting or other kinds of shaping from the clay. I try to do it when the clay is right at its most moist and it will bend on you. It'd be kind of like trying to carve designs into pizza dough. It's not going to be super useful. <clears throat> so at this point, this is where we can do some of that cleanup. So if you do make some cuts in there, you can remove little pieces. Okay, get in there, and the clay will hold its shape a little more. But as it starts to dry, you don't want to do too much of this because as the clay releases the rest of its moisture, as it passes through the end of this leather hard stage, it's going to get a lot more brittle. It's going to be like a really thin sugar cookie. You can already see that it's starting to dry because the clay around the edge here where it's thinnest is just starting to turn color. So this clay is kind of a nice soft dough gray right now, but it is going to turn a chalky sort of lightish white gray color. And that's when we know it's really dry. So sometimes I ask beginning students, you know, if their piece is dry, and a lot of times they'll tell me it's dry when it's at this stage. This isn't really dry. This is a late leather hard stage. Okay, so when something is dry, it's going to be bone dry and it's going to be that chalky color that we talked about 
be much lighter than this. And you can see as the piece dries where it's thinner, it's going to start drying out faster. And where it's thicker or in the center of your pieces, it's going to dry a little slower. So where the air is circulating the most, it's going to dry out the fastest. So that's something to think about if you're doing pieces that, um, you know, if you have a like a large round center piece and you put a lot of little fragile designs around it, sometimes that can be a little tricky because the you're trying to dry it, the center is taking forever to dry, and the delicate little pieces that you've put around the outside can dry a lot faster. It can make it delicate, hard to uh, move, and um, kind of tricky to handle. So. As we get into more complicated designs, I'll be showing you how you can kind of regulate that, make sure the thinner, more delicate parts of your work don't dry out too fast and make the piece really fragile to handle. Okay, so I am going to let these dry all the way finally, just sitting in my house. And I must say this is a rather humid day, so I think this is also why it's taking a while to dry the environmental conditions of your house or the ambient weather outside can also affect the drying times of clay. On really warm days, if, or if you've got a breeze blowing from the window, direct air, uh, more air circulation, less humidity, your clay will dry faster. So that's something to think about as you're working on it. You might want to be, um, you know, spritzing it. We've got, uh, a water bottle, a spray bottle on the list of materials. It's super handy, especially since uh, we're kind of in the warmer part of the year here and we've just come through a rather hot season. Okay, so when we get to the bone dry phase, I will come back, we'll look at our lighter colored chips that are dry, and then finally we'll get to the main event and make this into slip. And finally, the suspense is over. We're here at the exciting parts. We are going to transform our dried chunks of clay finally into slip. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so we've got our pieces of clay here, which have now turned the chalky color I referred to earlier. And clay at this state is called greenware. And in describing greenware, we say it is bone dry. So B-O-N-E just like a bone. It's very brittle, snaps easily. Uh, it's no longer really workable and we cannot slip wet clay onto dry clay in the state. It has shrunk nearly all the way to the size it's going to be before we fire it. Okay, so we're going to take our jar here and I have some water. So first, let's add our clay to the jar. And you want to be adding your water to the clay instead of pouring water into the container and then adding the clay on top of there, just so you can adjust the thickness and the quantity of the water, the thickness of the slip and the quantity of the water. Okay, so let's see, why don't we start there and see what we've got. So I filled this up halfway. And it's pretty exciting. Okay, so to start with, I am going to just fill this until it covers the clay chips there. Okay. All right, and I don't want to add too much water. It's a lot easier to <clears throat> add more water to your slip than try to subtract water. But in case it is a little thin, I've got some extra clay chips here that I can add in there to um, thicken it up if need be. And as I said before, I uh, tend to use a slip consistency that's more like paste, very thick kind of shading towards frosting. Um, kind of as you go along, you'll get a sense of what you prefer, but uh, it, when it's thicker like that, it tends to kind of stay where you put it. Um, it's very tacky and sticky, and it doesn't saturate your uh, clay slabs or whatever it is you're applying slip to. Um, 
with a lot of water. So if your slip is very watery, you're going to have a very watery solution that's going to kind of dissolve the surface of whatever you're trying to apply it to if you have too much on there. Okay, so we are going to let that set. You can hear it kind of snap, crackle, and pop. It's kind of fun. You hear that? <laughs> it's cute. So this is going to take uh, probably about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to dissolve, and then we can stir it up. So we'll come back for the piece de resonance in a little bit. Okay, last stage here. This is super easy. I'm going to take something to stir with. I like to use a fork. So we've got our slip. It's been dissolving in the water here with our clay chips. A little water floating on top. Okay, we're just going to take that and mix from the bottom. Okay, all those clay chips should have dissolved. I can feel a few lumpy ones in there, but those should probably uh, dissolve as time goes on. But it's good enough now that we're just going to stir that up. Just mix up the thicker stuff from the bottom. Make sure you're mixing in with the water sitting on the top okay if you did make a mistake and your clay is or your slip is too watery um, you can leave the jar open with the lid off and one like two things could happen either the clay will settle and you'll get a layer of water sitting at the top which you can pour off and then remix your slip or water will evaporate and leave your slip uh, a little thicker, which then you can re-stir. You just don't want to leave it out too long without the lid or else you will get this. It will dry up. Okay. But like we said, if you do get a situation where it dries up like this, just let it dry all the way to bone dry and you'll be able to add water. You can always revive your slip. You do not need to throw that out. Okay, one thing we forgot to discuss a little bit is sometimes your slip might seem, or your clay, will seem like it's a little bit smelly, smell a little bit of earth. Um, sometimes you see black specks on it or green specks. Those are mold and that is not at all bad for your clay. You do not need to worry about that. What I do is just take a little bit of your um, common white vinegar if you have some in the kitchen, I mean, if you even got fancy stuff, you could use that, but common white vinegar is fine. Just go ahead and pour probably a couple teaspoonfuls into your clay bag or into your slip container and that will kill the mold. But even if you don't kill the mold, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt your clay at all. Actually, it breaks down the bacteria in the clay and makes your clay uh, a little finer to work with, but a lot of people just don't like the visual effect of it or they just get ooged out by mold so it's very easy to kill so don't throw anything away if it gets a little mold on it you'll be fine okay so this is the consistency of slip where I like it if it does seem a little thicker to you you can add more water just a little bit at a time just add a tiny bit there okay just go ahead and stir that in like I said it's a lot easier to add water in there than to try to take that out because you will have to wait and wait for that water to either evaporate or for your slip to settle and get the excess water to float to the top there okay so when you've got that where you like that just go ahead and put that lid back on there Okay, so we've gone through the life cycle of clay from wet to dry to wet again. We've learned some vocabulary terms that we're going to be using all semester. And we've got our slip ready for our first project.